Well, since Passover was on Thursday, happy Resurrection Monday. I'm glad you didn't miss it. Psalm 76, that's the truth. Look at Psalms. And it says to the chief musician on Nigaroth, Nigaroth, the string instrument, a song or song of Asaph. Well, that was chapter 75. That was chapter 74 and chapter 73. Now, 74, I read to you that some scholars say that may not have been the Asaph of David's time. It may be a psalm writer like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, during or after the captivity. And he's writing what had happened like lamentation. All right, so we got the same guy showing up. 73, 74, 75, 76. It says to the chief musician on Nigaroth, a psalm or song of Asaph. First Chronicles 15. Let's look at the scriptures. Shall we? Let's not look at brains. Because brains is not what saves you. For with the heart, man believes on the righteous. 1 Corinthians 15, 16. And this is the time of David. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers. Chief, Levite, singers. Sound familiar? With instruments of music, psalteries, instruments, sound familiar? Harps, sound familiar? Cymbals, sound familiar? Sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed He-Man, the son of Joel, and his brethren, Asaph, the son of Beriah, the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Cuchiah. Verse 19, so the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, were appointed to sound the cymbals and brass, instruments. Let's go back to Psalm 76. To the chief musician of Nigaroth, an instrument, a song or song of Asaph, there he is. So I'm going to tell you what scripture with scripture, 73, 74, 75, 76, are all the same Asaph of David's time. And prophecy, a great prophecy, Psalm 74. Psalm 76, another prophecy. And sometimes throughout the Bible, this, the, the prophets spoke through music. In Judah, at South, Israel North, is God known, his name is great in Israel North. Well, there was a division in David's time, but there really wasn't a division. But there wasn't. That division did not come to after Rehoboam and Jeroboam. I mean, the North and South Israel fought over David because David was of Judah. But there was really no division. In Salem, that's Jerusalem. Salem is peace. Jeru, J-E-R-U, is city. In Salem, it's also his tabernacle. So true with Asaph of David and future, the millennium. And his dwelling place in Zion. Well, he dwelt at the tabernacle. He's also going to dwell as king in Jerusalem. So we're looking. See, scripture is applied three ways. Historical. It happened. Doctrinally. It could be prophetic. It could be something yet to come. Then spiritual. A lot of times you'll see the... the, the People, they'll spiritualize songs for the church. It's not about the church. You can apply it to the church, but that's not doctrine.
His dwelling place in Zion. That's Jerusalem. That Zion is usually representative of a future kingdom. There break he the arrows of the bow. When were the arrows of bro broken when David died? David fought his whole life. The shield, weapon, the sword, and in the battle, Selah, there it is, musical rest, second advent passage. Verses 1, 2, and 3 is the advent of Jesus Christ in the millennium. Jesus Christ is going to come and bring peace. True peace. A thousand years of peace. When the devil is released for that little short time, he's going to break that peace and it won't last long. Thou art more gr glorious and ex excellent than the more mountains of prey. The stout-hearted Strong, brave, proud, lusty, are spoiled. That don't mean they were given all what they wanted to be given. They were, all their goods were taken. As Joshua came into the promised land, and as Jesus Christ would bring the Jews into the promised land, there's the houses built. There's the vineyards planted. There's the wells of water dug. They just had to go in there and say, okay, I want that. Fight for that. Caleb, we'll give you this land, Caleb. All right, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to kick some giant butt. And he won. And he got the land. And he said, who, for my daughter, whoever beats this, this city, he'll win her hand. And he goes in there and beats that city. And he gets, he gets the city and he gets a wife. They have slept their sleep, death. The wicked people will die and end up in hell when Jesus Christ comes back. And none of the men of might have found their hands. The mighty men, the mighty armies. When you have time to look at their hands as quick as Jesus comes. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, that's the God. What God is all God? The God of Jacob. Not Ishmael. Jacob. Both the chariot and the horses are cast into deep sleep. In the Red Sea they were cast into the deep. When Jesus Christ comes, death. Jesus Christ ain't going to come back the second time to give life. He's going to give death to the enemies of God. Thou, God, even thou, God, art to be feared. And he will. A reverential fear. Who may stand in thy sight? <laughs> All right, let's go look at Revelation 19. Who's going to stand in the sight? You know, when I come back, I'm not going to be in front of Jesus. I'm going to be behind Jesus. Revelation 19. Who's going to stand in his sight? Revelation 19. Verse 12. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he, but he himself. And he's clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Verse 15. Out of his mouth goes forth a sharp sword. With it he shall smite the nation. So what's Asaph saying? The prophet. You don't want to be in front of Jesus. Not the angry lion, Jesus. And if you're an enemy of God, you're gone. You're gone. When once thou art angry, and Jesus Christ is coming back angry, thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. Now the earth hasn't fled away. But man, there's been earthquakes, there's been troubles, there's been plagues, there's been weird animals, there's been hailstones, and water turning to blood, no rain. The earth is disquieted during the seven years of tribulation period. And the earth is still when Jesus Christ comes. That peace. It's not under the curse no longer. 
When God arose, so if Asaph is telling us about the tribulation, I mean the end of the tribulation period and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, I think he can tell us in 74 about the destruction of the temple. When God arose to judgment, now when did that happen? In either as as of the case, one that lived with, with uh, David or the one that you know Jeremiah Ezekiel. It's all second advent to save all the meek of the earth. Selah. When does that ever happen? Jesus spoke about the meek. Surely the wrath of men shall praise thee. They're going to gather up against Jesus Christ. They're going to fight against the Lord Jesus Christ. That sword that comes out of his mouth, the fire of his eyes, flame throwing, you're wiped out. God's going to, Jesus is going to laugh. <laughs> and he's going to stamp on their body. And their blood is going to go up to, the, to the, his feet, and his leg, and the horse. How about showing the wrath of men shall praise thee? How about when. The devil gathers up an army and God, pfft, you're gone. Well, where is the praise? When the sand, the great white stone judgment say, Jesus is Lord. Amen. As they get cast in the lake of fire. That's a praise. All the enemies of God will be praising God one day through Jesus Christ. And some will probably do it still angry. That rich man in hell never changed his attitude. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Anybody else is mad after that? Go to hell. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. Vow and pay unto the Lord your God, Israel. They got the law and they got the vows coming back in the tribulation period and in the millennium. For all that Jesus Christ has done, I am going to bring more than a tenth of my sheep. Whatever he says he's going to bring, he's to bring it. Let all that be round about him, Jesus, bring presents unto him. Now presents, I said before, is a, is a period of time. What's those presents? Passover. The Feast of Tabernacles. For three times a year, those Jewish men were to appear before the Lord. And they were not to come empty. That ought to be fear. God is ought to be feared. Not coronavirus. And listen, they're not going to be afraid. With all the monstrosities and all the evils and wickedness, in the book of Revelation, and the Bible, John still records through us, through Jesus Christ and the angel that worked with Jesus Christ. They didn't fear God either. They cursed God. And there are people today in the world cursing God for this virus. It ain't over yet. Oh, you know, if we get victory over coronavirus, I've read the book of Revelation. It's going to get a lot worse. And Jesus said, okay, if we get rid of coronavirus, we go back to normal. Jesus said, unless we, unless God and I shorten the time, which they're going to, not even the elect is going to be able to survive. So go ahead, trust your doctors, trust your, your leaders of your nation, trust pills. It's coming a day that man's going to want to find death and God said, you ain't going to get it. I can't imagine getting bit by one of those bees, those bees with the scorpion tails. And I've always preached when I, I got something like that in all my teeth. I always picture somebody going up the top of the world to, uh, of the uh, Empire State Building, where they you can go all the way up there and you go out in the breezeway, you can look all around New York. I've been, I've seen it. Nice. And then I remember seeing some pictures of, of the World Trade Towers, and just it's a fearful thing. I just want to mention one. You know, people falling out of buildings. And when the stock crash crashed, people were jumping out of their office buildings. 
And I can't imagine the Bible says you're going to get stung with that beast of his tail. I think it's six months of torment. Liken to the same word that is found in hell. And they're going to get up to the top of a building and they're going to jump. And they're going to hit that sidewalk. And I always say, here comes a city bus that runs them over. And they're going to get up in excruciating pain. It's not going to work. They may take their guns and put it to their mouth and pull the trigger, but you ain't dying. You just made it worse. Coronavirus. The black pay. Those are kitty cats. Compared to what the lion of our enemy, the devil, will give. He, God, shall cut off the spirit of princes. Why? Because David's the prince. David, you've been, your whole life has been chased and running. Here is the land of Israel, David. Oh, yeah, I remember the land of Israel. Man, no, no, David, don't worry. You just stand by Jesus Christ and all your enemies. They're in hell. There are no princes in the in the millennium. There are kings and lords. Jesus Christ is the king of the kings and the lord of the lords. So I said, you got Jesus Christ. You got the apostles. You got the Christians who have the right to reign by what they've done for Jesus. And then under them, some kind of lordship. But they'll answer to Christians, the Christians will answer to the, the apostles, the apostles will answer to David, and David will answer to Jesus. He is terrible, that doesn't mean wicked and bad, that means he inspires terror. To the kings of the earth. That will be us, the Christians, king of kings. And when we get our reign those who get a reign and we are given to cities. For me, it'd be like, God, I'm not worthy. What did I do to deserve this? Well, you went out and witnessed. You went out and proclaimed. You went out and took a beating. You went out and got a tongue lash. But Lord, didn't you say that it was our duty? And then, yeah, it's your duty. But doing your duty, don't you get paid for it? And the Bible speaks about, you know, if, if you do a labor, you ought to get paid. And God spoke to the children of Babylon and said, Babylon, I'm going to give you these nations here because you did a service to me in Jerusalem. And I didn't pay you. So the terror of God as we are kings and he is the king. Everything that he's done for us in our life. For eternally. 